Thanks to your local cable company, you're watching The Learning Channel. Sometimes a recipe isn't what it seems to be. Find out why as The Learning Channel explores cooking with the urban peasant next. Oh, James. How do you do the things you do? I still can't believe that it's true. I get hungry when I think of you. Like champagne and caviar, you're such a treat. Like cherries, jubilee, you're all oh, so sweet. You want my appetite each time we meet. Oh, James, it's true. I get hungry when I think of Hi, and welcome to the Urban Peasant today. We're going to have fun. We're going to do something sort of Italian. Now, I say sort of because that means that we haven't got everything I've got in Italy. What we're going to do, first of all, is a dish called pizzaiola. It's pizzaiola is a sauce, all right? To make this sauce, you turn on the pan. Now, most Italian sauces start off with olive oil. Okay, some start with butter, but we're going to start with olive oil. So, turn on the pan, a little bit of olive oil in there. And then immediately we have to put the meat in. Now this is a veal pizzaiola. I haven't got any veal, so what am I going to do? Well, this, we're going to pretend it's veal. And you know why we, how we're going to pretend it's veal like a lot of restaurants do? I'm not going to say which ones, and I'm not going to say every restaurant, but there are a lot of restaurants that take a piece of pork, P-O-R-K, and they put it in milk, M-I-L-K, and it turns into veal, V-E-A-L. Now that's magic for you. You can do it. Pork is a lot cheaper than veal, so put it in, let it marinate in milk, and all of a sudden you've got something that tastes like veal. Now let's make this sauce. We've got our olive oil in here, and we're going to put some onions in, right? Onions into the hot oil, and we're going to immediately stir in. This is the way I do this. It's a shortcut. We're immediately going to stir in some tomato paste. All right. Now, tomato paste is a wonderful thing. It's just a lot of potato of tomatoes that have been boiled down and simmered down and brought to some sort of wonderful state. We want some garlic and there's the starch. We also need some real tomatoes because real tomatoes give it acidity. Tomato paste makes it sweet. So we'll put in some real tomatoes. Now, you don't have to mess. You really don't. You can dump in tomatoes like that. And the heat will take care of it. The heat will squish them down, make them into a sauce for you. And that will just become a very nice sauce. We'll put in a few capers, because we got them here. And if you've got a bay leaf, you can put it in. I haven't got a bay leaf today, so I'm not going to put a bay leaf. I'm going to put in some red wine. I'm going to leave the heat up high and I'm going to dump in a whole lot of parsley, right? A whole lot of chopped parsley. I want some spices in it, so oregano, let's make it good and spicy. Give it a good rub. Get it all in there and let it look after itself. Now this is going to turn into a thick, fragrant, wonderful sauce and it's going to be one of those sauces that people come in the door and they go, oh, I'm so hungry. And this is what you do. And it, it smells good already because we got the heat up high, okay? So just let it happen. And if it doesn't look as if you've got enough liquid in there, put some more in. Now, if you don't want to put red wine in there, put apple juice, unsweetened apple juice, or you can put a stock cube in there. You can do all of those things, but just let it simmer, all right? Put the lid on. Now we'll, we'll deal with this, with this veal. This P-O-R-K veal, all right? Now, when I've had this dish, the, the veal has been taken and barbecued first, so it's got barbecue marks across it. We haven't got a barbecue here, so we'll just heat up a fry pan and we'll just take it out of the, let me wipe this parsley off my hands. We'll just take it out of the milk 
can throw it into a really hot fry pan. Let the fry pan get hot and it will sear it. That's all you're doing is searing it to give it some sort of character, some flavor. If you wanted to make it thin, then you put it in a plastic bag. I'll show you how to do that later on. We're going to do another dish, an Italian dish with chicken. And I'll show you how to make it thinner and spread it out and make it go twice as far, which is a good Italian, good peasant thing to do anywhere because we are urban peasants, okay? Now, here's our sauce simmering away and starting to turn itself into something more than just a bunch of different things in there. Now, take the meat, the fry pan's hot, and in it goes. Instant, instant, instant. Watch it. It's, see how it puffs up? Because the heat hits it really quickly. I'm going to put this down and see if the cat wants it, okay? A little milk. Now, here, come on. <laughs> okay, now, turn it over and let it go golden on both sides. We'll do outsides first. And as soon as it's done, as soon as it's got seared, we're not talking about cooking it completely, we're just getting it that outside woodsy flavor that you get outside a little restaurant, okay? You turn it over again. See, it's browning really quickly, and it's going to go, ready, into the sauce. Now, just put it in sauce right now. Make sure it's in the sauce, not just floating on the top. John Rhys Davis leads the search for Neanderthal on the next Archaeology, Wednesday at 8.30 on TLC. The Murine Earwax Removal System has drops that safely loosen hardened wax when used as directed, plus an ear washer to gently flush wax away. Murine, the complete medically approved system to safely remove earwax. I hate to clean. That's why I love this fantastic... Did you see it? It cuts through grease without leaving the film. So when I have company coming, I have time to do the really important things, like wipe the lipstick off the milk container. Fantastic. So clean, it squeaks. <laughs> Are you sure you want to do this? Yeah, I like this shop. Okay, but we've got a long list here. Here, let me get the wine. Okay. You know what? It's a great Chardonnay. I hope they have it. <laughs> Mm, everything looks wonderful, you guys. <laughs> hey, Bill, what's the story with this wine? Yeah, Bill, what are we drinking? <laughs> you tell me what you think, and I'll tell you what it is. Oh. I think it's great. Ernest and Julio Gallo present a very special Chardonnay. It's time for a change to Gallo. Welcome back. There's our veal pizzaiola. Not really veal pork pizzaiola, but don't tell anybody, right? See how the tomatoes have all shrunk down and it's turning itself into a rich sauce. I'm going to move it over there, let it simmer for a minute, and there, just let that simmer while we get on and do something else. Now, we're going to make a thing called piccata di pollo. Now, this is often made, again, with veal in Italy, but we haven't got veal. We agreed on that to start off with, so we're going to use chicken breasts. Pollo means chicken. Okay, so we get a chicken breast, put it in a little flour, and I'll show you how to make a chicken breast grow. All right, you put it in the flour, and then you beat it. Now, you can read all kinds of complicated ways of doing this, but the best way to do it is to put it in a plastic bag and use a wine bottle. And why do you use a wine bottle? Well, I'll tell you why, because if you use a wine bottle, you're scared to hit it too hard so you won't break it. We don't want to hit it too hard. We just want to, we just want to do this with it. So what we're going to do, you can do this with any kind of meat that you want to stretch. And you just do this until it's stretched. And then you take it out. Watch this. You take it out of the flour and see how big it's gotten. Look what it started off as. That was how it started off, and that's what it grew to. Now, if that's the way that the five fishes can feed 5,000 people, isn't that great? Now, we're going to cook this very, very quickly, and you're going to like this. I'll go down this, this here. I'll take a little bit of butter. Oil? Butter? I like to use butter, so let's use butter, even though it is being Italian. All right. A little bit of butter in the pan, and I'll put this 
banged chicken breast here. And I'll put another one in the bag. See, plastic bag saves its great for ecology. Don't have to get out a lot of waxed paper. Just put it in there. And while the butter's melting, give it a bang. See, if I hit this too hard, I'm going to break the bottle. And then nobody will ever forgive me. And you'll stop listening, and that'll be the end, and I shall just have no alternative but to go back and live on the pig farm. And that's no fun at all. So there we are. We've got two quite large. See, that one grew, but it grew a different way. And you've got no control over that sort of thing. That's what you do. All right? Now, here we are. Butter melting. And what we do with this is really interesting. As soon as the butter's melted, we lay the piece of chicken into it. And we lay the other bit in there, like that. And we put a little bit of pepper on top. A little bit of pepper. A little bit of salt. A little tiny bit, because, see, we don't mind sucking juices in and out of this, because we're going to cook it so quickly. Normally, we don't put salt on until the meat's cooked, but this time we're going to do it, and we're going to put a little tiny bit of tarragon. Now, tarragon's a nice sweet herb, and when you're dealing with fine, thin meats, like little bits of veal or little bits of chicken like this, then you want something fine and not so big and robust as the oregano that we've got in, in the veal pizzaiola. Okay, now watch these, just watch these happening here. One, this particular one right here, is just going white around the edge. See, you just have to look carefully, and as soon as it's white, you turn it over. Really just turn it over carefully and start to cook the other side. Now you give it about another 30 seconds in there. Then we're going to make the sauce for it. Now, how do you make the sauce? Well, that's what the wine bottle was for, okay? Now you don't have to use wine again if you want to use apple juice that's just fine don't use grape juice because it's the wrong color it'll make it go make it look like beef and the illusion here nothing up our sleeves is that this is veal and veal is nice and white so there we are now we put in a little bit of white wine to make it into a sauce and suddenly this oh i this perfumes are coming when you live in the kitchen I live in the kitchen a lot, and the, the flavors that come up your nose. I used to go, when I was in university, I used to go out with a woman who worked in a fish and chip shop, and she used to come and meet me, and we'd sit in the bus, or sit in the movies, and I just used to breathe deeply of her because it was wonderful. There's nothing quite like fish and chips. I can't cook them on, you can't cook them at home, but there you are. So there is our Picata di pollo. We actually made it. It's proof that you can make something in about three minutes. Anything you find in the kitchen, you do it. You get on with it. It's fast and affordable. It's the urban peasant. I'll be back. Two minutes. In an emergency, reaction time is critical. So when one of these volunteers gets a cold, should she take a cold or allergy medicine that can cause drowsiness? Our new Sudafed 12-hour caplets, the original prescription strength nasal decongestant that relieves stuffiness and lets you stay alert. Great. For long-lasting non-drowsy relief. You got here quick. It's okay. Back this way. Depend on Sudafed 12-hour because people depend on you from the makers of Sudafed. We get lots of suggestions like this on how to help folks tell our Idaho potatoes from those others. Thanks but we'll keep the seal on the bag. So look for it, because if it's not from Idaho, it's just a spud. The Murine Earwax Removal System has drops that safely loosen hardened wax when used as directed, plus an ear washer to gently flush wax away. Murine, the complete medically approved system to safely remove earwax. Coming up on the next episode of Connections. How did the use of cannonballs in 15th century Europe lead to the invention of television? Find out when James Burke pieces together The Connections. Wednesday at 9 on The Learning Channel.
How is the pasta? Almost as good as the DiGiorno pasta we had the other night at home. DiGiorno. Refrigerated pastas and sauces. See, you use big chunks of diced tomato and sliced mushroom just like DiGiorno. And these tortellini have almost as much ricotta and romano cheese as DiGiorno. You are too kind. Hey, you're not serving DiGiorno here now, are you? Certainly not. Too bad. For restaurant fresh taste, you can make reservations or make DiGiorno. And now, enjoy the fresh taste of DiGiorno shredded Parmesan. Hey, think you know TV? Take this test. What's in two out of every three homes? What do Americans watch 70% more of than just six years ago? What are advertisers turning to in record numbers? If you said cable TV, smart choice. From Main Street to Madison Avenue, America's sold on cable. Right, welcome back. Just chopping up the garlic really nice and fine for the next dish. But first of all, picata di pollo, the four-minute wonder. Why do we call it picata? Picata means sort of pecans. It means bright and spiky. And what we're doing with this is doing it with lemon juice. So the lemon juice and the wine are making this wonderful sauce. And there it is, cooked. Take it out, put it on a plate, and it is pretty unto itself. You pour a little bit of the sauce over the top, a little bit of that golden sauce. I put that over there for a minute. And you lay a piece of lemon on so that they don't get confused. Right, so we'll put that out of the way over there for now. And I am going to make a couple of vegetables for you that will really interest and surprise you. All right, I got one little pan and I got one big pan. And we turn them both on. All right. Now, we've got a choice. We've got zucchini we're going to cook. A really wonderful dish of zucchini. I'm not going to do that because it's such a quick one. We've got a choice here between white cauliflowers and green cauliflowers. This is a, called a brocco flower, I think. So we'll use this one. And the way to do a cauliflower is just to cut around the stalk like that. And all the bits that you want to use fall off. And it's that simple. All right. I mean, you couldn't want anything simpler than that. This is surgery 101. We do brain surgery next week, but this is cauliflower surgery. All right. Nice pieces of cauliflower, which happen to be exactly the right size to cook. They just fall apart. In this pan, we'll put some water, about an eighth of an inch. All right. And on top of the water, We'll float some oil. Let me take that off there if it gets too hot. We'll put some oil in there, like that. See, this thing keeps clicking. That's got it. OK. Now, we've got, I'm going to put that over there, just for a minute, to have it out of the way. Let me put it, let me put it right there. And water and oil. About two tablespoons of oil. And the cauliflower goes in it. Just gets put in it. Let's break that bit up in bite-sized pieces and it just gets put in there and turned around all right now you turn it around to get a little bit of oil on it that's all you're doing is just turning it over so that it gets a little bit of oil actually on it and then that'll flavor it while it cooks in the steam all right so we put a little bit of salt on there on the top like that and as soon as it starts to make that noise we put the lid on, bang, because that, all that spitting, that's what happens when you put, you know, water and hot oil together, it spits. So we let it spit all over itself and that'll do, the, that'll do what it's got to do. Now, pan here, let's just turn this one down a little bit and we're going to do zucchini. Now, so I'll move this so you can see. You don't need all this, whoops, you don't need all this mess, do you? Let's move that cauliflower out of the way. And we get rid of this number here, all the cauliflower leaves. And all of a sudden, we are almost as clean as when we started. Right, zucchini. This is what you can do with old zucchini, right? When, I like the little tiny ones, about that long and about, about that thick. But this is an old one. Grater. Just grate a zucchini as much as you want. 
All right. Just grate it down like that. And you'll be surprised how far a zucchini will go when it's grated. Okay. Now, butter. Butter. Butter in the pan. Whoops. Yeah. Butter in the pan. The garlic that I cut up fine, remember? In the pan. Don't even wait for anything to melt. The zucchini in the pan. And just a little bit that's left there. And just give it a good stir. Now this has to be hot pan and you have to do it quickly. We'll turn that one down because we can hear it simmering away there now. We want a little bit of pepper on that. Just a little bit of pepper. And we want a little bit of salt. A little tiny bit of salt, okay? Stir it around, let it cook. And we've, that's gonna turn so bright in a minute. We're gonna put a little bit of lemon juice in there. Now, I've shown you this before, but you don't have to get the lemon squeezer out to put this in there. You just squeeze it. But there are pips in lemons, so if you want to do this and squeeze it through your fingers, there you are. You have suddenly got yourself the pips all caught in the juice. Right. Now, that's two vegetables, one of which, this one's almost done. See, the butter and the lemon juice make a sauce. And here's another sauce cooking in here, the cauliflower. What do we need to make the cauliflower work? Little tiny bit of nutmeg. A little bit of nutmeg, get it with a knife. Just grate it down on the edge of a knife, break it up, sprinkle it over the top. That's it, little imagination, little nutmeg. Remember, you have fun with it, that's what you do. I'll be back in two minutes. Explore the recipes and writings of James Barber by ordering your copy of the Urban Peasant Cookbook. James Barber's anecdotes and tips, together with his fast, simple and affordable recipes, create much more than a cookbook. To receive your copy, send 1895 to The Urban Peasant, P.O. Box 2284, South Burlington, Vermont, 05407-2284. Or charge by phone, 1-800-322-8321. The Murin Earwax Removal System has drops that safely loosen hardened wax when used as directed, plus an ear washer to gently flush wax away. Murin, the complete medically approved system to safely remove earwax. Here's another idea someone sent in to help folks tell our Idaho potatoes from those others. Made entirely out of french fries. <laughs> I still think we're better off with the seal on the bag, so look for it, because if it's not from Idaho, it's just a spud. works there's no cleaner clean than Prell and now the original clean of Prell Green is back work, work. Clean. Clean. there's no cleaner clean. clean we're going to meet some mice who can really use their imaginations Zazzy Norbert and Leon they're always up to something new singing songs, telling stories, making new friends. You'll always have fun with book mice. And then, are you ready to sing, to march, to paint, to dance? Then you're ready to join in. Right in your own home, book mice and join in. Weekday mornings at 6 and 9 Eastern on TLC. Right, welcome back. Just making dessert. Now, I put some red wine on to boil. I'm going to put about a teaspoon, tablespoonful of sugar in it, right? And I'm going to put some oregano. Now, I know oregano goes in tomato sauce, but it also goes well in red wine. And then in it, I'm going to put these pears. Now, you can poach pears whole, but it takes three times as long. So we cut them in half, and they're going to take one third as long. That's a piece of mathematics you hadn't worked out. Just put it in there, let them simmer away. We'll put the lid on, go in there for a couple of minutes, and we pretty well made dessert. We're going to serve that with ice cream. And we're going to, I mean, let me show you something about pears. If you do want to do pears, whoops, 
you just cut a pair in half. That's the way to start. And then to cut the inside out, you go with a little sharp knife and you just slide up there. And a little sharp knife is always a really great thing to have. Okay? It's just nips up there like that. And then you can take the whole inside. See? It comes out beautifully, except there's a little bit stuck down in there. That you have to take out. Because there we are. And we've got a pear. Now, if you want to stop it going black, just rub it with a lemon. You can rub just about anything with a lemon and stops it going black. It's the acid in it that stops oxidation. All right? And then you just peel it. That's all we did. Now, I can almost taste those pears cooking. The oregano, there's a lot of desserts made with oregano. The Greeks make a sort of country bugazza. They get a piece of pita and they put feta cheese in it and honey melted honey and oregano and put it on the grill. Wonderful stuff. And this, see, because it's happening already, the pears, let me just fish one out to show you. Look, the pears are starting to get that pinkish blush on them. Right, see? And we don't want to overcook them. We just don't want to overcook them. We want to let them turn into something still crisp. And we're going to take them out and we're going to put, serve them with ice cream and they'll be just wonderful. And you can do that in about two minutes. So I'm going to take them out right now. And then, here, let's see. Take them out right now, put them on the plate. Let's turn them over. And there we are. We got them, whoops, turned over. And if you wanted to reduce the sauce down, you wanted to boil it right down, well, it would turn into a red wine syrup. That's what you need, too. So you can make all kinds of wonderful things in a hurry, quick and easy. If you'd like these recipes, send us a stamped, self-addressed envelope to the Urban Peasant, Vancouver, British Columbia, postal code V6B4B2, post office box 5157. Sit back and relax at one of America's finest bed and breakfasts as TLC checks into the Richmond Hill, next on Great Country Inns.